On the 14th of May 1991, my husband was killed in an underground mining accident, leaving me with three little kids under the age of seven to face raising a loan, no income, no idea what we were going to do moving forward. For me, it was massive. For me, it was absolutely devastating. Straight away, having to come to terms with, well, who am I? Losing my identity, not knowing who I was now. Having to contend with three little kids and wondering how I was going to manage not just the care of them by myself, but also, you know, financially. The oldest one, Jay, when he, when I had to organise for him to be collected from school, he was only in year two. And so breaking the news to him, I had five minutes to prepare myself for that. And as soon as he walked in the door, I knew that it was going to be the hardest thing that I'd ever had to do in my life. And to sit this little boy on my knee and say to him that Dad's had an accident at work, and his automatic reaction I knew would be, is he okay? And to then have to say to him, no, mate, Dad's been killed. And then the absolute hysterical screaming and crying and repeating himself, I'll never forget it. And the second one, he was totally different in terms of that he just kept running off and disappearing and saying, not asking, but saying, Dad will be okay, won't he, Mum? For the last 12 years, I've been travelling to sites around the country, delivering sessions to a variety of um, companies and contractors in a variety of industry areas to uh, try and tell them my story and, and, and the personal perspective, I suppose, as to what the consequences of a workplace fatality consist of. Because I think sometimes we forget that behind the scenes, you know, there are those there that do matter to us and that perhaps we haven't considered. And that has been my driving force, is to ensure that those that are out there have some sort of appreciation and understanding of the consequences, or what I call the ripple effect of a workplace fatality, not just on themselves, but on others. To look at it from somebody else's perspective is sometimes the lesson people need to realise just how important their own safety is. There's no, there's no second chances in some instances. These processes and procedures that are out there aren't just put in place to make your life harder. They're there generally because of somebody else's either misfortunes or perhaps you could even say they're written in somebody else's blood. You know, that they are the learnings that have been made along that journey through this particular industry sector. And I can't state uh, strongly enough that if I can't persuade you know, people out there to change their work behaviour, then I'm wasting my time. Helen's story has always had a profound effect every time I've seen it and, and on our entire workforce at, at all the sites that I've seen her, her, uh, her presentation. Um, Helen tells it as it is from the heart, from the guts of somebody that has lived it and it reaches in and, and tears at the people's uh, senses, I suppose, at their, at their sensibilities. It um, drives home a safety message that is not management driven, it is driven from someone that, that has lived it breathed it and continues to do so. That to me is why she is an icon and a legend in the, in the industry.